My name is Peter Hunterkamp. I live in Amagansett. I've lived out here since 1980. We are in the Stephen Talk House, and it's a nightclub I've run for 35 years. It was closed back in 1987. The partners were fighting. Um, I was a failed novelist, and I was getting drunk across the street with Clifford Irving, who had recently got out of prison for writing the bogus biography of Howard Hughes. And he said, what did you ever want to do other than uh, write a book? I said, I always wanted to own a pub. So he said, buy that bar. And I literally uh, ran around town, borrowed the money, and bought the bar. And a few weeks later, a cousin of mine, Cliff Black, um, he came in and played music here and we started making it a live music venue. A lot of people on a personal note that I knew died. Um, and a lot of musicians um, who play here died. In the, in the next year, we would lose 13 musicians who played here. One to COVID, uh, Toots Hibbert of Toots and the Maytals. Other maybe COVID related, there was a suicide. Justin Towns Earl OD'd on drugs. Was that related to him not performing? I don't know. So it was one after the other of that, and then several of my friends died, um, including um, a number of them from COVID. Out here, Charles Waller, the, the artist died. A friend of mine, John Lucen, who helped me start the Wounded Warrior Project, got COVID in New Jersey and died. And a, a person that works here, whose picture's right over here on the wall, Paul Jones, 40 years of age, three young children died of COVID. So it was one after the other in terms of bad news, and it was how to keep the myself personally um, afloat, as well as the people that are here. And one of the neat things was we did a couple of GoFundMe's and the community came out and gave back to us. So we, you know, raised probably a, about 80 grand that we distributed among the staff. And as hard as that was, I obviously took it. We all needed it. That was one of the things that sustained us in this was the people who you know, came out to support us because we were one of the businesses, we were the first to close and the last to open. And that's what it looked like and that's the way it turned out. And we started a trivia night because I was allowed to have a trivia night. And that became an enormous hit uh, because people had nothing to do. There was no social life for people out here. Every day was the same. It was like Groundhog Day. And it was the same crummy day in which nothing happened. So you have a trivia night, it was packed. And then Nancy Atlas came up with this crackpot idea that the musicians would play inside the club and the audience would be outside watching them on screen so we could maintain distancing protocols. A number of people said, you're out of your mind, it won't work. Well, for three weeks running, everyone who played inside, their friends came out to support them. We gave the bands the money that these people had to pay to sit outside and look at them on, on a screen, but just to get out and have that proximate environment to what the talk house used to be, it, it, it was great for three weeks, but then the, the, uh, the state shut that down as well. So then Nancy Atlas again came up with a great idea, which was to interview all the local musicians that are part of this place, and they played here and we filmed their performance here, but it wasn't just their performance, it was them talking about the other musicians or interviewing them together. And she created this six or seven week series that people could then pay X amount to see in their homes, and the money went to the musicians. And it was a phenomenal idea. We had a blast doing it for the musicians that were here. We got together again. Uh, the community uh, came out. And, and bought those episodes, one, because they wanted to enjoy it, but two, because they wanted to support the local musicians. You know, we were very blessed because not only were we able to survive it and keep our staff on life support, um, we had the best summer we ever had this past 2021. And thanks to uh, a bipartisan effort in the Senate, led by our Democratic Sen Senator Chuck Schumer. They passed legislation called Save Our Stages, and it specifically targeted music venues, theaters, comedy clubs. You've had a document, so my, my 2019 tax return versus my 2020 tax return. I was able to get a grant for 45% of that income, which is an enormous amount of money. Uh, it's a grant that has to be given back, 
unless it's used for specific purposes. One of those purposes is to give back payroll or give payroll to the people who suffered during that period because we kept them employed. And the federal government's you know, stimulus stuff helped as well, as did unemployment benefits. We wound up um, coming back very, very strong thanks to that legislation, as did music clubs all across the country, if they were able to survive long enough to get there. And a lot of them didn't, especially ones who had to pay rent. I got to think that out. I'm trying to think of anything positive. Um, you know, maybe some introspection, maybe some marriages <laughs> uh, uh, were saved, maybe others were broken up. I, I, I'm not sure I can come up with a lot of positives. The, the main thing is that the community was so supportive of us. You know, we always get these kudos for all the things we do for local charities. And again, I stress it's easier to give than receive. We have a, a, a platform to do it, and we're lucky to be able to do it. But the outpouring of support that came back, and everyone staying loyal who worked here, and people like Nancy who came up with alternate ideas, whether it was her music thing inside or the, the, the hustle that she put together, which now uh, memorializes all these musicians and their thoughts about each other forever. And that would never have happened if there wasn't a pandemic. And uh, me becoming famous doing trivia night, that was a big thing. <laughs> Survival. Just surviving. I mean, that, that, was the, that was the quest every day. How to face the endless sameness, the uncertainty, and just to forge ahead and survive and come up with whatever little plan you could to keep the place going, keep people going, keep yourself going through this endless sameness. It was like being in jail.